Hey guys, Lance here. I've got another video for you today. Now the people that followed my build log would have seen that not long after building the system, my EK water blocks water pump actually failed. EK have been really great about this though, and they're RMAing the pump. So I thought I'd film my first time draining the water cooling loop, or draining a water cooling loop, and continue the vlog style thing going on here. And I was also planning to do some upgrades that I plan for later down the track, but I thought I might as well do them now since I've got to drain the loop. So I'll also go through those. But let's get in close and we'll try and get this loop drained. So I'm going to put some paper towels down to start off, just so I don't make a mess. I'm hoping it's not going to make a mess, but I guess it's better to be safe. Let's chuck this down here. Now I'm going to undo this fitting here and this is probably the worst container but I'll try and catch as much as I can hope you guys can see that so that's that unscrewed so if I try and pull this hose off it is on here quite tight Here it comes. Oh, I didn't think about it coming out both sides. And I guess. Haven't made too much of a mess. on there briefly hopefully it's going to not drip too much but I want to undo the top so it can get air in to replace the fluid as it comes out ok now let's try this Oh shit. Okay, that made a bit of a mess. I think when I do the next part of this build, or when I buy my new parts, I'm definitely going to incorporate some type of drain system into the loop. Because um, we can see there is water and coolant anywhere, uh, everywhere, sorry. Oh my gosh. At least the system probably isn't going to be powered up for a little while. So, here's hoping everything gets a good chance to dry out. It hasn't gone over to the power supply, thankfully. So, I'm going to make a little barrier here. This is not really going according to plan, although to be honest I didn't really have a plan. So that's my fault. Let's take this off here. There's still water in some of these bits. Oh dear. I think I'm going to have to undo another hose to get some more of this out. I'll do this one here. Okay, I'm going to put this under here. Mm -hmm. This one's a bit tricky because it's 
got a whole lot of stuff in the way. Oh no, it's dripping out the bottom there. But it's draining. Gradually. And there's nothing anywhere where it really matters. A bit of water's got back here. This is going horribly wrong, guys. Horribly, horribly wrong. Now, I guess the next step here is to get something as low as possible. Let's go for this fitting here. Put these back on so they don't leak. And we're going to go for this. I can see this becoming a huge problem. Now there's stuff in here. This is very stressful. And messy. And this stuff smells a little bit bad. That looks mostly drained, but I think there should be a lot more than a, that in here. Um, the radiator is probably full. I might be able to remove that, or mostly full. I might be able to remove that without spilling too much. But essentially, I just needed the pump drained, and that's what I've got at the moment. So. Okay, this is not going well. But the pump is drained, so I can now remove that and package it up ready to send off. The system is mostly disassembled as we can see back here and the pump is out ready to be sent back to EK Water Blocks for the RMA. I mentioned at the start of this video that I was also wanting to add a few new parts to the build, so I wanted to sort of go over what I was thinking, what my plans are at this stage. Now I've already ordered this part, I've got a second ASUS Strix GTX 970 on the way, so I can run two GPUs and SLI. I had been thinking about this for a little while and I did consider possibly selling my single GTX 970 and upgrading to a single 980 Ti or even two 980s, but that was still a lot more expensive, and in benchmarks I've seen online, two GTX 970s still seems to be able to run equal or around the same as a single 980 Ti. So I thought I'd stick with that and get a second 970. Um, I've also made a reasonably large order from EK Waterblocks, with all the bits for the second GPU of course, but I also thought I'd give um, hardline tubing a go, have a play around with that. I'm a little bit scared, I mean I'm going to have to do some bending and cutting with the, uh, with some tools, but I don't think that'll be too much of a problem and I think it'll be a great learning experience. And I've always loved the look of the hardline tubing over the soft tubing, so I'm really excited for that and of course all the fittings to go along with that. And I've also bought some extra fittings and things so I can have a proper drain system on the on my machine or on the loop and as we saw at the start of this video it wasn't really the most pleasant time trying to drain that loop 
to be fair though, it is about four in the morning local time and I'm pretty tired and I just at this stage want to get it done so I can get this pump on its way back. But I guess that's no excuse. And um, lastly, or sorry, not lastly, one other thing is I also wanted to get some pastel or translucent coolant. I'm quite liking the look of the solid colours rather than transparent. So I was thinking possibly getting the EK red to match the rest of the build being red of course. I did consider white and changing my cabling to white but I wasn't too sure about black, red and white all in one so I thought I'd stay with the black and red at this stage. Now lastly what I wanted to get for the build was a new case. I was wanting something with a basement and preferably a little bit bigger with some better cable management area in the back as you can probably imagine everything was squashed up pretty tight in the back of this. The first case I considered was the NZXT S340. It's got that nice basement, it's quite a plain tidy looking case so the focus can be on the components you can see through the window. Although I was wanting to put at least a jewel rad in the top and that only supports a single radiator in the top. And I've seen, sorry, I've seen a few cases that I like a lot more than that, or that I liked more than that. And there was two cases from Fantex that I was looking at. One was the Evolve ATX, and one was the Enthu Pro M Acrylic. The Enthu Pro M Acrylic was my first choice, and I believe it's about 89 US dollars. And from Amazon was twice as much as it was to get delivered in the case itself, bringing it to about 350 New Zealand dollars, which was a lot more than I wanted to pay for a case considering I paid 89 for this one. So I was looking at the Fantex Evolve ATX. Now that is about $300 for me locally, but it's a very nice case. It's one I've liked for quite a while and it's got the basement, it's got some good water cooling things in there and I'm really liking the look of that case overall. I do have to do a little bit more research into these but I think that will be the decision for now unless somewhere locally we'll get the Fantex Enthu Pro M. So that's about it for this anyway guys. A uh, bit of a all over the place video but I thought it was worth making to share with you guys what my plans for my build were. But anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.